Hi everyone, welcome to Plants and Lucia. My name is Lucia and today is a very special video because it's the first Q&A in this channel. I cannot wait to answer all of your questions, so let's get to it. If you're watching this video while it is premiering, make sure to send a message in the live chat. I will be online and I would love to talk with you there. So I actually got two kinds of questions from you guys. The first kind of questions are personal questions. So with these questions, you will get to know more about me. The second kind of questions are actually about plants, how to take care of them, and some tips that I may have for you guys. So we will divide this video into two parts. The first, personal questions, and the second, plant questions. So let's get to it. This question was actually asked many times, <laughs> and it's a good question. You know, I think I have two favorite plants. The first one is actually the Strelitzia, specifically the Strelitzia nicolai, or white bird of paradise. This plant, oh my god, you guys, every time she comes up with a new leaf, it becomes more majestic, and I love it so much. The second plant, of course, is my beautiful Lupita, which is my Monstera deliciosa. This is because this plant is actually very close to my heart. First of all, she comes from my country. She's from Mexico. And the one that we have here actually arrived here as a gift for my 30th birthday. The coolest thing about this specific Monstera is that she's also 30 years old. So I feel this special connection with her. You know, my first succulent was actually the Echeverria. So that one has a special place in my heart. No, actually I'm very happy to say that I have not killed a plant since I got my book. Sometimes I had problems with some of my plants, but the book actually helped me figure out what was the problem and how I could help. So it's a pretty cool book. Books that I have found really helpful as a plant beginner are, of course, How Not to Kill Your House Plants. As I have said, this book has over 100 plants and it actually tells you all the tips that you need to know, like how to water them, the light that they need, the temperature that they need. And then they give you some examples of some problems that the plant may have and how to help her. So this one, I think, is a must for a plant beginner. I also like living with plants. This one is a little bit more general in terms of care for plants, so it gives you some tips on how to water your plants, but this is not specific to each plant. I still find it useful because it gives you more methods that you can use for your plants. Another thing that I love about this book is that it gives you some ideas to display your plants at home. So if you're looking for some DIY projects to display your plants, this book is really cool. The third book that I would recommend is actually the Urban Jungle Bloggers. This book tells stories about other plant lovers and their journey with plants. It gives you ideas on how to display your plants at home. And also you get to know the story of a full community of other plants lovers just like us. I really like it. And currently, I'm actually reading How to Make a Plant Love You by Summer Rain Oaks. This is such an inspirational book, you guys, and it has helped me explore my relationship with plants a little bit deeper. So if you want some inspiration, I will recommend this one. You know, I didn't start collecting plants so long ago. I actually started this year in January. I was going through a rough time in my life and I started making many changes. This is when I brought our first plants home. And I discovered that plant love is actually self-love. When we take care of plants, we take care of ourselves. And I remember being so happy when I started seeing the first new leaves. So I started connecting with other people that likes plants and I found this beautiful community. And I'm so happy that now I can share it with you guys. This channel actually started right after I started collecting plants. So about the end of February this year. And this was because after discovering how much I love taking care of them and then the beautiful community that also loves plants, I had to share it with people. And now I'm so happy that I get to share this journey with you guys and also see what journeys you have to share. Yes, but I can tell you, in the beginning it was very intimidating. I had never grown from the seed, so I actually decided to challenge myself and try it. And right now I'm actually growing my first plant from the seed 
I'm actually growing chives, kale, and alfalfa. I started with this new company here in Berlin, they're called Gruneo, and they send a box to you with all the information and everything you need to start from zero. So now they're growing and it is amazing to see that it is working, you guys. But I will make an update video so you guys can see. My all-time favorite, of course, is The Office, the American version. <laughs> I love it so much. But now I'm watching one that I really love and I recommend. It's actually on Netflix and it's called Paquita Salas. This one is a comedy made in Spain. It is so funny and I really love the message that they're trying to send. So I would really recommend it. You can watch it in Spanish with English subtitles. It's really good, guys. My favorite movie of all time is Arrival. Have you guys seen it? It's amazing. Imagine if that happened in real life. Oh my god. If you haven't seen it, please go see it. It's really good. So what plant has lived the longest with me? Uh, as I told you, I just started collecting plants in January. I actually brought one with me from my old apartment. I think this is the one that has been the longest with me and this one is my Anthurium. She is very strong and I am so happy that she's been so long with me. Okay, you guys, um, yeah, I have been told that I am a happy person. I can tell you that this community really makes me really happy. Your comments, just sharing how much we love plants with each other, is just full of positive energy, you know? But you know, I also get sad sometimes, or I'm not in a good mood. And one thing that I have learned from my plants is to accept my state of being, acknowledge it, and see what I need. So I even have a reminder in my phone Every day at 5.30 p.m. I get a reminder that says, how do you feel, what do you need? And sometimes when I get it, I feel thirsty, so I go and get some water. Sometimes I feel tired, so I stop working. Sometimes I feel happy, and I'm so happy that I can actually notice that. But I can tell you that it is okay to sometimes feel sad. It's part of life, and in its own way, it's a beautiful thing too. Just to acknowledge it and be okay with it. Of course, tacos. Any kind of tacos, just tacos. My best moments in life. <laughs> That's a pretty big question, you guys. But I thought about it and I thought of some moments that have been very big in my life. Of course, when I became a Canadian citizen, that was a very proud moment and I am so happy to be Canadian. Getting accepted into university, that was a big step for me and I remember that day and I was just jumping all around. Coming to Europe for the first time and this was really big for me because it was the first time that I was gonna travel by myself for a long period of time. And of course this comes to the fourth thing which is in this trip I met Jan. I remember thinking, yeah, this guy is cute. <laughs> Yeah, ich spreche ein bisschen Deutsch. I have been living in Germany for almost three years. So, natürlich, I had to learn some German. I'm actually now taking some intensive courses, so if you want to practice, please comment below in German so I can also practice with you. That's a pretty good question since I am Mexican and then I became Canadian, so how come I am here? So what happened is that in university, I was doing my university master's degree in Canada and I was studying history and I was actually focusing on Central Europe. So I actually came for a summer course here in Europe and I went to Czech Republic. That's when I met Jan. So after that, we were just doing long distance for a while. Uh, he came to Canada, then I went to Czech Republic and we were going back and forth. Until we decided that Germany was the best location for us. It's very central in Europe and it's actually very easy to travel from here to Canada. So it has worked for us and we love it. No, I don't. Since I live in Berlin, I actually bike everywhere. And it's pretty cool because sometimes it can be even faster than car, depending on the traffic. So yeah, I love my bike. My favorite number of all time is number two. I don't know why, but I love it. My favorite color, oh, I think this is a difficult one. I like blue, I like purple, I like aqua, I like orange, dark pink. <laughs> 
I love history. I think history really tells us a lot about ourselves. I just finished reading the book Sapiens. If you have read it, please comment below. It is amazing, you guys. If you're interested in history of humanity, this book is great. Do you have any books about history? Please let me know below. I would love to read more. I love music. I also like to sing. And my favorite instrument is the cello because it's so passionate. And I also love to get to know new cultures. So I love traveling and learning new languages. I think both traveling and learning new languages open many doors for you and for your mind. So if you get the chance to do so, do it because it really changes your life. I love many songs, but one song that I could always listen to is Death Over Distance by Ben Howard. Some people thought that I am a cat person, and I am sorry to disappoint you, I'm not a cat person. I actually love dogs, and I really wish cats the best, I promise, but it's just I'm afraid of them. You know, there is a story behind it, and it is my fault. I was maybe three years old, and my grandmother had two cats. And I was playing with one of them, and I think I annoyed him, so he scratched my face. Now, I know this was my fault, it was not the cat's fault, but right after that, I'm just very scared of them. Every time I see them, I just get scared. So, <laughs> maybe with time this will go away, but I think maybe it's a trauma, but yeah. So, yes, we have a family dog in Canada, his name is Buzz. Uh, I'm gonna put a picture of him so you can meet him. He is amazing, you guys. And you know, many people have told me that this dog actually acts like a cat. He's really proud and he's always... When you call him, he doesn't come or he comes when he wants to. So apparently that's what cats do. Anyways. I love when it rains outside and you can hear the water. And when it rains really strongly. I love being inside and just listening to the rain. I put on some candles and drink some tea or make videos for you guys. And <laughs> I just love it. You know, yes, there are many good houseplants that can survive the winter. Uh, there are many strong houseplants like the ZZ plant. One winter houseplant is actually the Christmas cactus. It actually flowers during the winter holidays. So if you want some color and happiness in your room during the winter, this is the perfect plant to have. You know, I use an organic homemade fertilizer. So I actually make it myself with veggie scraps. But I think the most important thing is to get to know your plant. So plants generally need fertilizer during their growing season. Generally it's spring and summer, but it's good to check. And then you don't want to over fertilize your plant. This is gonna end up killing her. So I would say that the most important thing is to know when to fertilize her and how often. So you give the exact amount that she actually needs. This is a very good question. And you know what? When I learned the common mistakes that people make, I discovered that the mistakes that I was making were actually very common. So the most common mistake that people make with plants is to overwater them. And this is actually a very innocent mistake because we want to give so much love to our plants so if we see that the plant is a little bit down or anything that is wrong with her or anything that seems a little bit wrong with her, we think that she needs more water. But this is generally not the case. So we tend to overwater our plants and then we actually drown them. So as you may know from my other videos, I always check if my plant needs water with my finger. So I make sure that the soil is dry and then I water. It's better to let the soil dry in between waterings. The second most common mistake for plant beginners is light. Sometimes we put our plants in a place where they will get direct sunlight. But this may actually burn the leaves. Most plants actually like indirect filtered sunlight. So make sure to learn about your plant and see what she likes in terms of light. It's so cool to see that you guys already know some things about me. For example, that I like leafy plants. Yes, I do like leafy plants more, but of course flower plants also have their beauty. If you have a bedroom with indirect sunlight, I would recommend that you put a flower like the peace lily. The peace lily is so great to have in the bedroom because it actually filters the air. So you will have a very good night's sleep. 
this is a question that i get a lot um and yes there are some plants that are very strong and will survive with minimum care for example the set set plant is a beautiful plant but a very strong plant but i can tell you the beauty of having a plant at home is actually seeing her thrive because you put your care into it and then she gives you love back so yes the set set plant is a very good plant for minimum care but give some love to her I can tell you that in my experience, every plant that I bring has brought happiness to me. This is because the love that I give to them is also self-love. And the relationship that I build with them makes me really happy. But of course, if you know in any culture or in any beliefs that some plants are more lucky than others, you can also talk to each other in the comments and maybe you will find someone that knows more about this. Okay, my friends, these were all the questions and I'm so happy that we could do this. I actually really like doing it, so if you liked it, please let me know in the chat or in the comments if you're watching the replay. And maybe we can plan another one for next time. Thank you so much for watching and as always, I will see you in the next video. Okay, bye!